Is God calling us to suffer for his name? We're going to find that out in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, coming up next. Hey everyone, this is Dana with the Wisdom Calls channel and what your pastor never told you.com, helping you to understand the Bible better so that you can have a better relationship with God. Welcome to Bible study today. If you're interested in Bible studies, having a better relationship with God, and specifically learning about end times Bible prophecy, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing down below. Before we get into the Bible study today, I wanted to remind you that we're still in the middle of our campaign. In honor of our one year anniversary on YouTube, we're actually wanting to give back and help our community in West Africa get fresh water. So if you'd like to partner with us, we are doing a campaign for that right now. And I have a link down below. I also have prizes that I'm giving away to people who donate. So for any donation amount, you will receive certain gifts. And then I have even better gifts if you give $50 or above or $100 or above. But I really want you to help partner with me so that we can help get fresh water to these people in Africa. And if every subscriber on my channel gives just $2, we'll be able to like that, just buy this well and dig this well for them so that they can have fresh water for a whole community, a whole village of about a thousand or more people to have fresh water every day. So if you would partner with me, I would so appreciate it and it would be great for the kingdom of God. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before God our Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering and with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. So we see here that the Thessalonians received the gospel even though it meant that they were going to be facing severe suffering, which they stayed, they, they endured that. And it says not only that, that the Holy Spirit gave them joy in the midst of it. Now that is a testimony to the Lord. When brothers and sisters endure persecution on behalf of the Lord, the Holy Spirit gives us joy. That's not normal. Normally when we go through suffering, we're complaining about it. We're, we're like, woe is me. Why this have to happen to me? But when we suffer for the Lord's sake, the Holy Spirit empowers us and gives us joy. And we notice here that they didn't feel about it as some people think that oh, whenever the church faces persecution, that it's somehow God beating up his bride. No, that's not what happens here when we face persecution and tribulation. And that's not what Jesus is talking about in the future when the great tribulation will come on the earth. That's not a time of punishment from God. That wrath of God happens later at the day of the Lord. But the great tribulation that Jesus is speaking of in Matthew 24 is actually at the hands of the Antichrist. Likewise, the, the Bible teaches us that Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist is present in the world today, and it was present in the day of the Thessalonians. So the Thessalonians were suffering at the hands of the, the spirit of Antichrist, which opposes the things of God, and that is how they were suffering. And yet, in the midst of their suffering, they're not blaming God, they're not saying, woe is me, but they're rejoicing and giving glory to God. We can't do that in our own strength. We have to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. The God, God has to help us in the midst of our suffering for us to have that correct attitude. Let's continue reading. And so you became a model to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell us how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and wait for his son from heaven, whom was raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. So here we see persecution 
comes before Jesus' coming and his wrath. And this same theme is carried on throughout the scriptures. We see this in Matthew 24, we see this in Luke 21, Mark 13, and also in Revelation, that we see that believers in Yeshua, in Jesus as the Messiah, endure suffering, persecution, even to the point of death. But they receive power from the Holy Spirit in order to be able to endure it. And that at some time in the future, Jesus is going to come. We are waiting for the Son of God from heaven. He is our hope. He is our blessed hope. His coming is our blessed hope. It's not the rapture that's our blessed hope, but it's His coming that is our hope. We wait for the Son of heaven, of heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. So remember when Jesus prayed for the disciples, He didn't pray that they would be taken out of the world. He says, I'm praying not that you take them out of the world, but that you're with them basically in the midst of it. He, he's praying that God is with us as we're enduring these things. And so we see that what is Jesus going to rescue us from? It's not from this persecution. That's not what Jesus is rescuing us from. It's from the coming wrath, the wrath of God. And that only happens at the day of the Lord. And we've touched on that in several other videos. I can put some links up for you guys so that you can look into those things a little bit further. The big takeaway from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 is that the Thessalonians were known everywhere. Why? Because they received the message even in the face of great persecution that their reputation went out because they received the message of Jesus even in the face of that persecution. So if you're watching this video from a country which persecutes Christians, know that it is worth counting the cost. There is no one like Jesus. And the Bible teaches us that we should not fear the ones that can kill the body, but the ones that can kill the body and throw the soul into hell. We need to fear the Lord. And when we fear the Lord, that is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says. Fearing the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when we put our trust in Jesus, we put our trust in him who created all things, we know that just as he allowed Jesus to die and be raised from the dead, that same power is in us. When we come to faith in Jesus, we die to our old life. We die to it, we leave our old life behind. This is what repentance is about. It's about turning away from our old life. So we die to our old life, but we become new in a new life and we become more alive than we ever were before. Because in one way, prior to knowing God, we're like walking dead people. We're walking in the bondage and the decay of sin and death. We're slaves to it. Even if we know it's wrong, we keep going back to it. But yet God wants to set us free from that. And when we die to ourselves and become alive in Christ, that's what Jesus was talking about when he told, um, I believe it was Nicodemus, you must be born again. And he was thinking, how can I be born again? I can't enter into my mother's womb and to be born again. But Jesus is saying we have to be born of the Spirit. We're born once from our mothers, but then we need to be born of the Spirit of God. And that birth is what brings true life. And so if you have not yet received Jesus as your Savior, and your Lord, I encourage you to do so today. Just humble yourselves in the quietness of your place where you are right now and surrender your heart to the Lord because he is a lot. He is able to raise the dead. You know, no matter where you are on planet Earth, this body only has so much time. We don't know how much time it has. The Lord alone knows. We only have so many breaths to take. We have only so many mornings to see. And that's the case for every single person on earth, and that's a result of the initial sin of Adam in the Garden of Eden, that he rebelled against God, and in that rebellion brought death upon humanity. But Jesus himself died on the cross in payment for your sin and for mine, bearing the wrath of God. And that's what we learn in this passage, is that we are not appointed to wrath anymore because Jesus took the wrath of God. That was the thing that we needed to be afraid of, is the wrath of God. But now there's no condemnation for those of us in Christ. We no longer have condemnation or shame, none of that anymore. Though our garments were stained red as scarlet, they are washed white as snow because of what Jesus has done for us. 
And so we learn in this passage that the Thessalonians, they received that message with joy. And I pray that you receive it today with joy. No matter what persecution may come, know that God's Holy Spirit will come and live inside you and will empower you. And he will give you joy in the midst of horrible circumstances. He gives you a peace that surpasses understanding. He gives you a joy that's unspeakable. And I want that for you. So let me pray for you today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who are listening. I pray that you would pour out your spirit on them, just as your word says that you would. You said in the last days, you would pour out your spirit on men and women, the young and the old. Lord, that you are no respecter of persons. You don't have favorites. You don't lift up men above women, Father God, but that you see us all as hidden in Christ. There is no longer Jew or Gentile slave or free, male or female, that we are now hidden in Christ. I thank you that you see us through your beloved son who is perfect. And it is, it is through him that we can enter into the Sabbath rest. We can rest from our own deeds, rest from our own works and come into that work which is, was already done in Jesus. And Lord, I just pray that um, if there's any listening that need to commit their lives to you, they would do that at this moment right now and that you'd fill them with your Holy Spirit. Empower them. And Lord, for brothers and sisters that are living in countries where Christians are persecuted for their faith, I pray that you give them wisdom, wisdom from the Holy Spirit about how to share their faith and when to share their faith at the right times. I pray that you would guide their steps just as you guided the first church, that you'd show them where to move and when to move, Lord God, that they would feel your presence with them. I pray for miracles and signs and wonders to verify that which you've placed in them. And for us in the Western Church, I pray, Lord God, that you would come alive in us, that you would embolden us, Lord God. Here we are so free in this country, and yet we're so timid. And yet our brothers and sisters on other parts of the earth are not free, and yet they're so bold. Lord, birth in us that boldness, Father God. Produce in us the good fruit that you want to be in your bride before you come. The perseverance, the endurance, the long-suffering, the patience, the faith, the boldness, the courage. Produce those things in us so that we're ready when you return, Father God. And Lord, we know those things are not produced through easy things, but you are the ultimate physical trainer, God, and you will, you're the ultimate physical trainer and spiritual trainer, Lord God. And I pray that you would produce in us that good fruit, Father God. We know that it isn't always easy. We know that it doesn't feel good while we're going through it, but the fruit that is produced is worth it. Lord God, we just thank you for this time together and thank you for your word, which is life in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was my pleasure to study the Word of God with you, and I look forward to studying 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 in the next video. Have a blessed day.